Right, I've got lights, I've got tea, I've got my script, I've got the camera, I've got the microphone, and you guys, and me. Right, we're good to go. It always feels a little bit more personal when I'm doing this from the floor. So welcome to the next instalment of We Need to Talk Photography. Today we're gonna to be covering DSLR stroke mirrorless versus the phone. We're gonna look at some examples I took yesterday morning, a place called Crosby. Naturally, we're going to review your comments as well. And I also posted a comparison on Facebook to see if anybody can actually spot the difference between the two images. One was shot with the Nikon D850, the other with the iPhone 14 Pro Max. All that and much more coming up on today's episode. So let's get straight into it. And I'll start as always with my thoughts. Am I for phone photography? Do I much prefer going out with the DSLR? And how does my iPhone compare? So before I bought my first camera, my Nikon D3200, the only thing I had was an iPhone. I think it was the iPhone 4 rest of the time. I'd had other camera phones before that, but never really used them. Never really utilized them to see what they could do. So the iPhone 4S, God, that seems like such a long time ago now, was the first phone I used Sort of, not seriously, but when I actually really started taking images from a phone, I felt it was great for what I needed. Just sort of snapshots, just sort of memories that I was willing to capture. It was nothing more, and I never saw it as something special. Around that time, Instagram was in its infancy, and I've got to say, I was really late to the party on Instagram. I don't think I seriously stepped into it until 2019. So as time went on, technology upgraded, and so did my phones. When I actually had the idea to go out and buy a DSLR, I think I was on my iPhone 6 at that time, and I just wanted to take photography a little bit more seriously. And I think judging by a majority of your comments, that's kind of how you see the phone, as more of a camera to do snapshots. Nothing too serious. No, it's just something that's quite handy when you're out and about. And let's face it, a majority of us have our phones in our pockets all the time. So if an amazing sunset kicks off, you've already got this piece of equipment in your pocket. Now, a couple of years ago, I did a bit of a vlog on iPhone versus the DSLR. At the time, I had my Nikon D810, and I wanted to express something through that video on the difference between taking the images on the D810 and taking the iPhone shots. Through that video, I explained that yes, the DSLR is much better at taking images, but what I love about phone photography, for me especially, is I always use it for memories. Whenever I look back on images I've taken at locations with the DSLR, I've gone out on shoots, I never see those as particular fond memories. It's not to say that I don't enjoy the day, I do, but the phone shots always seem a little bit more personal, always better for sparking that memory. And maybe that's where the key is, it's just a quick snap. It's a quick moment. Instead of hunting for a composition, making sure the light's right, sort of waiting 10, 15 minutes just for that light to be perfect. Anyway, that's just my thoughts, and that's always stuck with me. That was until yesterday morning. I decided to take a trip to Crosby. I wanted to see what this iPhone 14 could do on capturing images. I'm already overwhelmed with what it can do on video. I'm so glad I'm sitting in here today. The weather outside, well, we've got snow. And for those of you who know Warrington, and certainly the Northwest area, snow is quite a rare thing in this area, but it's not particularly nice snow. It's kind of quite slushy. I think because we're fairly protected by the Pennines here, we don't, we tend not to get the dramatic weathers. Cloud seems to take forever to disperse and occasionally we'll get weather like we've got today. So yeah, this is quite unique for us. So for now, I'm gonna leave you with some footage I took yesterday at Crosby. I was going to try and do a full vlog there, but Crosby is such a difficult place to shoot. I did have a bit of a rant yesterday on Facebook. Granted, when I got back yesterday, I was cold, tired, and hungry. Never a good combination for me. But I find it a really difficult location. Last summer, I actually did a vlog from there. The weather conditions were, well, it was quite stormy, but really dramatic. And even then, I found it quite difficult to shoot. So this is a very small type of vlog on what we're discussing today. I'll rejoin you back here in a little bit. Well, good morning, good morning, and welcome to, uh, to Crosby Beach. So it's currently about quarter to eight, and, uh, yeah, sunrise just hasn't happened this morning. So I'm just on the outskirts of Liverpool this morning, a place called Crosby. And you may have heard about Crosby Beach because it's got one unique feature. Or when I say one unique feature, there's actually a hundred of them. But uh, yeah, basically it's these guys. But last time I was here, I mentioned that if it wasn't for the statues, there'd be nothing else to shoot on this beach. It's actually quite a plain sight. Now we do have the Docklands behind us, Liverpool docks in the distance, and then over on the other side of the water, we've actually got New Brighton. But from this side, it's very difficult to shoot and actually try and find a, a composition of any interest. 
as I've mentioned, these statues are actually uh, modelled on Anthony Gormley. Now the problem is, they're all modelled on Anthony Gormley. So once you've seen one, you've seen them all. Some are submerged in sand, some have got water around them. But that's about it. I think if you're planning a trip to come to Crosby, the best time is probably to come when it's a little bit stormy, a little bit dramatic, because yeah, I think you need it. That and high tide. And today, I've got neither. But that's not what today's all about. I'm currently doing a series of We Need to Talk Photography, where I cover a number of topics regarding photography and the questions I feel important to ask. And the next topic is DSLRs stroke mirrorless versus the phones. Have the cameras on phones actually developed that well, we can get rid of all of our gear. And I didn't think it was right to actually enter into that topic without actually testing that theory. So behind me, I've got the Nikon D850 with the 24 to 70 millimeter lens on. And then I've got the iPhone 14 Pro Max. Now I already know that the video capabilities on the iPhone are absolutely phenomenal, but what's it like for photography? Can it match what this thing can do? I think I know the answer to the question already, but this morning I'm gonna put it to a test and see what this can do. Gosh, this beach is so boring. But anyway, I've taken a few images, I've taken a few on the iPhone, I've taken a few on the D850. I'm gonna head back uh, to the car, go home, and uh, yeah, just sort of have a look, see what I've got, and um, yeah, I don't, <laughs> I don't know. I'm sorry, I'm so sorry. I'm sorry people of Crosby, I'm, peop I'm sorry of, of people who love this area, but I, there's nothing, <laughs> there is nothing here to photograph. Absolutely nothing, I'm really struggling. I don't know, maybe this shows how poor of a photographer I actually am. Maybe a good photographer will be able to come here and, and make some of this situation, but I can't, I can't at all. Creative levels are way down. In fact, I think I'm in the negative figures. <laughs> oh my gosh, this is terrible. Anyway, I'm gonna head back now. I'm gonna head back to the, the car. Uh, I'll rejoin you at home and um, yeah, review the images and uh, yeah, I'll, I'll, I'll speak to you in a bit. <laughs> See you then. Bye-bye. You'll have to excuse me. We might get interrupted in a little bit. I'm expecting a couple of things being delivered. Non-photography related, it's all to do with the garden. I'm going hell for leather on the lawn this year. So I've ordered a load of bits and pieces to try and just, yeah, get the lawn looking spot on. How domesticated have I turned? But yes, I'm trying to squeeze this vlog in in between other things. Sarah's been away this week and she's due back tonight. So uh, yeah, I've got to get the house back to its state. It's similar to when you're a teenager and your mom and dad go away. It's been great. Whatever you do, don't tell her though. So out on location, one thing I actually really enjoy, and this probably sounds quite strange, but bear with me, is the discipline of photography. The discipline of looking at your camera, looking at your shot, working out which lens you need to put on. What focal length you're gonna shoot, get the tripod set right, and sort of slow everything down. I always find a majority of the time, photography relaxing. It's something I enjoy doing in my spare time. And certainly when I've had quite a challenging week, it's always good to go out and just relax and do some photography. Forget about it all and just concentrate on the moment. But when I was taking those images on the iPhone, I felt I could get a little bit more creative. I felt as if I could play around with the location a bit more and the composition because I was just a lot freer to move. One thing you haven't got to worry about is settings. Quite simple, you just tap the screen, you've got an image. One feature that really does help on this camera is the fact you can shoot in RAW and puts it much closer to the DSLR. But for sturdiness, I do prefer the Nikon D850. You feel like you've got something proper in your hands. The buttons are where you need them, and ergonomically, it just feels a lot better and a lot more stable. When I came to process these images, 
I processed them exactly the same way that I would a normal image from my DSLR. I first of all ran it through Lightroom and then onto Photoshop. And this is where it comes quite interesting. Now the iPhone does brag it's 48 megapixels versus the 45.7, let's call it 46 megapixels in the D850. But I've got to say that is completely irrelevant. It means nothing. I've seen advertised the new, I think it's Samsung, which has got a 100 megapixel camera. And again, that kind of means nothing. It's just a selling tool. The part that matters is the size of the sensor. And purely, there is no comparison between a DSLR of any type and the phones. They just can't compare. And I really noticed this when I started processing the images. With the D850, I could slide the sliders all the way each side and I could really sort of play around with the image, really just go wild with it. And there was no real destruction. The highlights could be brought down a lot more. The shadows raised massively. And the whole color adjustment, a majority of it looks right. So when it came to process the images from the phone, although adjustments can be made, and this is shot in RAW, remember, you've got to be very delicate. You can't save a lot of the highlights, you can't bring the shadows up, and the slightest touch on the sliders with the color makes a massive difference. So you've just got to be very, very careful. I think on a side note, if you're not very competent with Lightroom and you want to know what it can do, I think this will be a great way to learn processing an image from a phone. Because as we all start off, we all start moving these sliders left and right and we don't really know what we're doing. And I think that will really teach you or certainly rein you in from going too far with the sliders. But anyway, that's a side note. But with that said, the image that came out was not too far away from what the DSLR could get. And hand on heart, when I posted these images on Facebook to see if people could spot the difference, I actually had to remind myself which was which. So if that's not praise to the phone, I really don't know what is. Now, yes, when you zoom in, when you do a little bit of pixel peeping, it's not, you don't have to go far to actually see the difference. There's quite a lot of fringing, there's much more grain, and the image seems to have a much more digital type of look. The thing with all of these phones, even if you're shooting on RAW, the quality isn't within the lens, it's within the software it uses. And that can be seen in the images. Ah, but Ben, the phones are moving on so much. So are the DSLRs and mirrorless. Oh yeah, never thought of that. So to wrap up my thoughts on this, yes, the phones have moved on. Are they at the same level as DSLRs, even with a higher pixel rate? No, but the gap is really starting to shrink. Now all of this is not taking into consideration printing. Printing is something I very rarely do. I've got a few images around the house, but that's about it. Now you guys who print, you will definitely see a difference in quality. And I can't get too much into this subject because like I say, I just don't print. But for things on social media, Facebook, Instagram, Vero, Twitter, and all the rest of them, I think the phone has actually come to the level where you're actually be quite proud of the images. So hopefully that sums it up. Let's have a look and see what you have to say. So again, to keep this video a little bit more snappy, I'll just pick out bullet points on what you guys have to say. So Bilingual says, old fogey here. You might remember from the last video, this is a chap who called himself the old dog. I just cannot get used to using a phone for photography. I use it, for example, to send a photo of some product home when I happened to be out shopping or running errands to confirm it's what's expected. He also mentions how his wife uses it for church events and then how he got into uh, digital photography in the early 2000s and how he bought a Sony Cybershot with his five megapixels and shooting on JPEG. And something about the ridiculous memory sticks, I'm not really sure what that is. He then also mentions that he also had an additional viewfinder as well as the LCD screen. He then goes on to say that the other mirrorless style cameras he's had have all been point and shoot types, just like the phone. He also says how he has to hold it at arm's length to actually be able to focus on the back of the screen. So I'll stick with my DSLR, where my readers when I use live view. That's if I remember to bring them along. Thanks, Bill, some great points there. So Craig Pfeiffer says, the cameras on phones are getting better all the time. There is no doubt about it. There are severe limitations, at least with the phones I've had, but they are generally good for a quick post on social media. Provide decent video quality, which I can clearly vouch for, and quite interesting here, can be printed fine in a pinch. I was surprised last year when someone contacted me wanting to license one of my photos. Turns out that it was a photo I had taken back in 2017 with my LG G4 and done a quick edit using Snapseed. I had posted it on Google Review and this person had found it and liked it. He also mentions it's not an image he would have actively promoted. He also mentions that he's certainly not going to get rid of his camera gear for exchange for the phone. He also mentions how he can shoot RAW on the phone, but he generally shoots in JPEG. 
and I kind of understand that. It's only when you just after that quick snap. If I have the choice of taking my bulky heavy camera gear out or just my phone, it wouldn't be the phone. With that said, I can't fault those that exclusively use their phones for photography. I have seen some amazing images and many that you would never even know were just from a phone. Yeah, with you on that, I've seen quite a few images and they seem to be getting more and more popular as well. Thank you very much, Craig. The studio says, such great points raised by everyone. This makes for such a great debate. I only shoot with a mobile phone. My dad used to use an old camera, film camera, and it always looks so complicated. But I do love my iPhone 13 to take pictures and post them on Facebook and Insta. You also mentioned about that Chase Jarvis book that I showed last week and uh, the fact they're gonna order it from Amazon. Hope you enjoy it. Kilimeru Images, I think that's how you pronounce it. They mentioned more of a comparison between mirrorless and uh, DSLR, about how there's no um, vibration from the mirror. The viewfinder gives you much more detail, which I, I kind of agree. And there's a lot more technology within those cameras, such as eye tracking, which I really don't know how that works. Some voodoo there. Some phone cameras are great, but for me, they're just a snap. Keep the channel growing. Thank you very much. John Sparks mentions how he uses the Nikon Z7 II but he struggles with a lot of the new features on there. So Hugh Wolf says, in fact, I must explain, like most of you, Hugh has been commenting on, uh, on most of this series and he's given me quite a lot of background of actually where he lives and uh, yeah, sort of around his area. And he actually lives in the desert in America. So his images are very different to mine, certainly with the weather conditions we're experiencing at the moment. But anyway, Hugh says, the other day I went for a walk trying to lose a few extra pounds and as usual, I had my iPhone with me. It's interesting how much you see when you're walking opposed to traveling in a vehicle. Couldn't agree more. Sure, I've taken my D700 out on this very same walk and I've been pleased with the shots as they're much better than my iPhone. It's a convenience factor of having a camera in my pocket rather than hanging around my neck. And honestly, there's not a lot on this particular walk amongst dev desert scrub that warrants hauling a heavy camera along. I can imagine. If I do spot something really nice, I can make a special trip out with my real camera as it's not too far away from home. Yeah, so kind of like scouting exercises, which I tend to do quite a lot. Thank you very much, you. Great to know. Paul Cook Photography says, while well, there is no denying the phone camera is getting better with each release and are super handy, that they absolutely cannot compete with the DSLR stroke mirrorless cameras. As you know, I am a primarily seascape photographer and often take my images well before sunrise. There is no comparison between the long exposure taken on my Sony versus the new long exposure technology on the camera phone. And it goes without mentioning the print quality between the two. So this goes back onto what I was saying earlier. I'm not a printer and majority of my images go on social media. So for me, it's fine. But I imagine if you're printing, that's kind of the next level. Paul then mentions how the phone has come on a long way, certainly with his camera abilities. But for serious photography, I'll stick with my Sony every time. Not much of a debate in my mind. Well, thank you, Paul. Great to hear. And I've actually seen a lot of Paul's work on Instagram. He also has a YouTube channel, both worth checking out. That's Paul Cook Photography. The only problem with sitting on the floor, your bum goes numb after a little bit. Oh, anyway, so Badger, interestingly enough, mentions how he always carts his Nikon D300 around instead of his phone. That's quite an interesting point that I just saw people naturally just took the phones out with them. But yeah, good to hear. Paul Hill mentions, and this is quite interesting. He lists a number of Nikon cameras he's had in the past. I think the most recent one being the Nikon D500 and how he's moved across to Fuji. He's got the Fuji X-T1. Now I've heard a lot of people recently that have gone from Nikon and other brands to Fuji. Are they really that good? And is it worth looking to move across to Fuji from Nikon? Let me know in the comments. Uh, Paul also mentions that he uses a mobile phone, he's Huawei. I never know how to say that. Huawei, Huawei, uh, P30 Pro and how it gets great images certainly for posting on Facebook and Instagram, etc. He also mentioned how he'd never swap from using his camera gear to just the, the mobile phone and how he loves taking pictures of the full moon. Yeah, I can imagine that'd be quite a bit of a challenge on a mobile phone. I do know that the latest iPhone and Samsung phones can definitely produce images good enough for printing large. It's just not for me. Quite an interesting point, Paul. I think the only way I'm gonna answer this is actually printing something myself from the phone. See what it comes out like. 
Craig Yates mentions about um, going from DSLR to mirrorless and how, yeah, how expensive that will be, but how the Nikon D850, which is what he owns, is good enough. And I can certainly back him up on that. He mentions about his partner when she goes out, she always um, takes images and takes quite incredible images from a mobile phone. Very similar compositions. It's just limitations with the processing power. I would class a mobile as a good auto image snapper and great tool to learn to practice some aspects of photography on. Some very good points, Craig. Chad in the alt says, great topic. I use my iPhone for photographs quite often, but realistically it has its limitations. If you try and shoot wildlife with a phone, you're going to be very disappointed. There is a right tool for every job. Sometimes size does matter. Good point there, Chad. Yeah, I, I couldn't think of doing, uh, doing wildlife photography with a phone. It just wouldn't work. M Davies says, I moved from the Nikon D7200 in 2017 to the Fuji X-T2. Again, another photographer has gone from Nikon to Fuji. He also mentions how he's kept that camera because of the uh, he travels and he's just come back from Paris. How lovely. Hugh actually came back to me and actually added a, a few more bits and pieces onto his, his comments as well. And I just want to highlight one thing he says. Phone cameras are a photographer's best friend and worst enemy. They're convenient as they're in the right place, they're in your pocket. But they do have their limitations. You can't enlarge the resulting image too far without looking like a bad photocopy. Get what you mean? But as an aid to my aging memory, they're the bomb. And I completely get what you mean. And I think that's my point. I will keep coming back to every single time. I always get better memories from the phone than I do my DSLR. And I'm sure it's just down to the fact that these are just snaps taken on the phone. And maybe the snap sometimes is just good enough. So there we go, some really interesting points there. And yes, the phone cannot be ignored anymore. It has moved on so well. But with the transition from DSLR to mirrorless, so have the pro level cameras. I just feel that the gap is that much smaller now. Plus, as time goes on, more and more people are upgrading their phones. So I believe it is more and more about developing your skill as a photographer instead of just relying on your gear. As I said in the past, the best camera is what you have on you. It's all down to you getting the best from that camera. So for the next video, it's all about social media. What's your thoughts on social media? Certainly with Vero coming into the picture, have you closed your Instagram account? Essentially removing the, your whole back catalog of images. Let me know your thoughts. And what's your thoughts on the reels, TikTok, and the uh, shorts on YouTube? Is it something you enjoy watching? Do you find it difficult to get noticed on social media? Do you see poor images getting hundreds of thousands of likes whilst you're struggling to get a couple? Also, what's your favorite platform to post on? And any recommendations for Facebook groups? We'll discuss it all on the next topic of We Need to Talk Photography. Now, there will be a couple of weeks break until the next video is released. Purely for the fact we're going away for a week. Yes, I'm going to take some images, try and squeeze a vlog in there as well, but I won't be able to cover this topic until we get back. So apologies for that. It will be a couple of weeks until the next instalment comes along, but please bear with us. It will be worth a watch. I think the next one could get quite meaty. Let me know your comments below on social media. It would be great to hear. I'm off. I'm going to unpack the uh, garden gear that's got delivered and just make sure everything's there and uh, yeah, try and brave the snow maybe. But for now, take care, all the best. See you as soon as I can. Bye-bye now.